Today I want to do a little bit different video. I'm kind of leery of the gun videos. A friend of mine, uh, Dave Morelli from Morelli's Tactical Advantage. He's got a really good YouTube channel if you care to see it. Uh, he's a retired cop and a gunsmith. Builds some really beautiful muzzle loaders and things. And the YouTube is run by a lot of liberals that are anti-gun and he, they've given him a hard time a lot of his videos they won't allow him to make any money off of and you know really that's kind of the whole reason for this is to try to make a little bit of money and it ain't very much so I don't know I haven't done very many gun stuff and uh, that's the reason why but today they're getting rained on it's sprinkling on me but I've got these trapdoor spring fields and it's an 1873. Uh, these were their first ones were converted from Civil War muskets by cutting the barrel off and adding this trap door. The first ones were uh, the first ones were muzzle loaders, and then they added this to put a cartridge into them. They made them in both 4570, which both of these are, and uh, in 5070. I've got a rolling block that's in 5070, I'll show off one day. But uh, the way this works is you put a bullet in there and shut this, and then it fires. Then you pull it, pull it back again, flip this up, and it's got, maybe you can see it, that little ejector the spring that kicks them out. And this one, it doesn't eject very well. I haven't shot it before. This one I've shot quite a bit. Um, they're not really very strong. The, the lockup on them is this little cam that works with this. That's all that shuts those, is this little knob going into that little notch in there. And that's why factory loaded 4570s are not very strong. It's because of this gun. Uh, you want to be really careful if you have one of these, if you want to shoot it, to uh, make sure the loads are not really very hot, souped up loads. I mean, keep them black powder equivalent. Now this one, this one's in pretty good shape. It's got the, got the sight that flips up and slides and everything works. It's kind of shiny. It looks good. The only thing with it, it's kind of a strange one. I haven't figured out for sure if it's been shortened, they're usually longer than this. Or if this is what they call a cadet model. If it's a cadet model, it's probably worth a little bit of money because they didn't make all that many of those. But uh, this one my neighbor gave me. I admired it over at his house one day. And it has definitely been cut down from a longer rifle into a carbine. Uh, if you look at this, it's got a, a dowel where the cleaning rod went and uh, kind of like this one has but the uh, the carbines didn't have cleaning rods and this sight <laughs> that is never going to move again it is one rusted solid piece of metal but surprisingly enough it does function the ejector doesn't eject very well but it will extract them I'm guessing that the chamber is probably rough enough and maybe if you cleaned it up some it would work better but uh, I'm a little afraid to fire it with a solid lead bullet because um, the bore isn't very good as you can see it's extremely pitted on the outside but uh, the bore isn't very good it's got some rifling though and it's not as rough as the outside so today I'm going to try loading up some shotgun shells for it out of 4570 and see how it does. I'd like to hunt grouse with it. It would be fun to hunt grouse with a gun that's at least 100 years old, probably closer to 100 and a half. So anyway, stick around and see how this goes. I've heard it said time and time again that you can shoot uh, 410 shotgun shells through a 4570. And while you might be able to do that, it is never a good idea to put a round into any gun that's not chambered for that gun. Uh, 410 shotgun shells are a lot smaller than 4570s. They'll actually fit inside. 
if you measure these this measures out to 478 at the base where the 4570 measures out right at a half an inch in fact it's a hair over uh, now a 45 Colt on the other hand it measures out to 475 this measures out about the same so you can shoot that's also 475, 476 you can shoot uh, four tens out of a gun that's chambered long enough for a 45 or a 45 Colt, um, not out of 4570. The the other problem is the rim. That is what is that? That is five two eight. Where the 4570 rim measures out 603. So if your uh, if your extractor falls down behind the rim of this one, it's not going to grab it. It's not going to eject it. So while it is probably possible to shoot four four tens out of the 4570. It's really a bad idea and shouldn't do it. Uh, kind of funny, the the 410 shotgun is the only one that's measured in caliber and not gauge. These are actually 41 caliber is what the 410 stands for. It's .410. Um, the rest of them, like a 12 gauge, the way they come up with that number is it takes 12 uh, round balls the bore size of the gun to make one pound uh, 20 gauge is 20 bore size lead bullets or lead balls to make a pound and 16 you know that's 16 to a pound and so on but 410 is 41 caliber compared to 45 caliber So next step you want to do is find yourself a dowel that'll fit inside of the side of your case. This one happens to be one of Cindy's wooden spoons. But then uh, I want to have most, pretty much 50/50 uh, powder and lead. So mark the outside of your dowel. Won't do it very big because she'll kill me. <laughs> um, so that's the overall length. I want about that much powder in there and that much lead. So then I'm going to use a 2F Go X black powder. Most of my guns I shoot 3F in, but I have a can of 2F. So I'll use that for this. And this powder measure. Um, I'm guessing, let's try 30 grains and see how close that is. So that's a little bit less than half, which is probably about right, because, uh, let's see, is this one primed? It's not primed. Let's switch them over to this one. I need to put a primer in this shell. Okay, so then I got a little bit less than half of a case full, and a 7 16 leather punch punched out all these discs made of corrugated cardboard uh, because it's corrugated you need you want a little bit of a give to a shotgun shell and being corrugated it should compress a little bit and give that little cushion there they fit just perfect in here 
7 sixteenths drive punch. So tap them down, but you want them to be fairly loose. Okay, now let's check this again. That's about right. It's just a little bit on the other side of that line compared to where it was. So then I need some uh, some shot. I do like to make a paper, well let's just do that. If you've ever reloaded shotgun shells, you use a plastic wad that has a plastic cup for the shot, uh, the pop, whatever it is, the shot in there. Um, what that does is it holds the, the lead in place, it doesn't rub on the barrel of the gun, and when it comes out the barrel it'll come open like that and let the shot fly. It holds a tighter group that way. Uh, 410 shells cups are too small to fit in here. They rattle around. And so what I do is I use a paper cup. And if you take your stick again, you want it just a little bit longer. So let's go about halfway past that mark. And I want it to taper just a little bit like so okay so then put the straighter edge not the tapered edge on here about where your line is for your amount of powder and roll it around your stick I go twice Cut that off. I didn't taper it enough. I want it to be kind of held held together. There we go. Okay, like that. You want it to leave about a quarter inch or so and fold that all under. Like that. So it's kind of self holds itself together. And then Put that inside of your case, like so. It's just a little bit too long. Let's trim that off a little bit. Okay, like so, and then I've got a coffee can full of this old shot. This stuff, I don't even know where I got this from. It kind of varies in size, but it'll work fine for grouse. So then, just fill up just below the top with your shot. And then another piece of uh, cardboard from the top of an old beer box. Punch out a thin cardboard disc for it. Put that over the top of your shell. Then I'll run this into my crimp die. Or I have taken and uh, just put a little bit of hot glue on there. Since I've never fired this gun before and it is in such rough shape, I'm going to go ahead and fire it the first time <laughs> with a string. Let's see. I kind of like living. I really don't want to blow up. Well, that wasn't bad. No problems at all. Let's see what the brass looks like. Okay, so the way these work, this one, <laughs> I just did it and I didn't have the camera turned on. You cock that back and you lift that up. 
This is supposed to shoot out, but it only came out a little ways. I had to drag it out the rest of the way. The chamber is probably rusty enough that it needs polished. Um, it's got a little bit of powder residue on it, which means it didn't expand and seal the bore very well, which would be the trouble with a 410 shotgun shell also. Uh, the primer is nice and round. There's no pressure signs at all. And I wouldn't really expect any with that amount of uh, uh, powder. That's not a crack. That's just a black mark on the on the brass. It rubs off here. But uh, anyway, let's load up a couple more of these and we'll pattern them on a piece of cardboard and see if I can even hit a grouse with this thing. Okay, so a grouse is about the size of a wild chicken. In fact, a lot of folks around here call them chickens. So we got our target there. And that's probably maybe 40 feet. Well, let's see how this thing does. Well, most of the pellets look like they missed the chicken. But I got a couple in him. I don't think it would have probably killed him, though. <laughs> so, that's not so uh, great. Let's try it again. That's kind of a problem. The Extractor isn't, it's extracting them, but it's not ejecting them. Kind of got to pry them out of there. Get up here in a minute. Maybe with a little bit of use it'll get better, but right now it's really not very fast. Well. <laughs> I might have got him. Looks like most of them they'll miss. They're all over everywhere. Well, maybe this isn't going to work. Let's try it without the shot cup and see how that does. Well, that looks a little bit better actually, except for it's kind of hard to tell which, which bullets were which, which shells, or which, uh, which holes, I guess. Well, I'll load up a couple more and try a, uh, got plenty of power. Try a different target and see how they, that does. Maybe without the shot cups this time. Okay, so cardboard chicken number two. This time he's laughing at me. See what he what happens here.
Well, without the paper cup, that one would have done him in. But, uh, that'd be pretty close. That's only maybe 30 feet. I do wish these would come out a little bit easier. It'd be slow to reload. Might be able to take a um, dowel and some steel wool and polish that chamber just a little bit. that one looks like. A lot of pellets everywhere. It's not grouping all that tight. But there's enough in the bird that it would for sure do him in. Let's try this side of the box. Well, there's some all over it. Yeah, I think maybe I should stick with the 22 for the chickens and not these, but it'd be kind of fun just to shoot one with this gun. I don't think this gun has been shot in who knows how long. There, uh, it's an 1873 Trapdoor Springfield, so this thing is, what would that be? Uh, well, well over 100 years, almost 150 years old, and, uh, you know, this might not be quite that old. They made them, I think, up into the 1880s and things, but uh, it'd be kind of fun to just hunt with it, being that it hasn't been for so long. I might try to get one grouse with it and then hang it back on the wall. Anyway, I got one more shell loaded. Let's try it out one more time. Matter of fact, let's do this. Love the smell of black powder. Hmm. <laughs> Not all that good. I hit it with, let's see, one, two, three. Maybe, maybe four pellets. That one's kind of dented. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was worth a try. I don't know if I'm going to hunt with it. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.